flowers by the bunch. Welcome, welcome. So it is Tuesday afternoon and I am coming a little early today and it's because we've got some crazy weather coming in and so I thought we would come live, do a quick live for you, show you how to put together this fantastic dough bowl and um, then we would scoot right on over to the house and get in our safe spot. But so this afternoon I am going to make a beautiful arrangement in this dough bowl. Um, and so, several days ago, I posted a picture of a dough bowl I did for a welcome home, uh, we welcomed home a brand new baby. And so, um, I thought that I would show you really quickly how to put this together. Um, when you come on, please tell me hello. Tell me how you're doing today and tell me where you're from. I always love to know where you're from. And also, if you can hear me loud and clear, give me a thumbs up or give me a heart. Let me know that you can hear me and you can see me and we will get started. Um, Victoria's here. She's going to read comments for me and I am going to go ahead and get started. So I don't want you to think that I'm rushing, but we're kind of rushing. <laughs> so I apologize for that right away. Um, Victoria, we got anybody on there? Uh, yes, Miss, let's see. Miss LaDonna, Miss Shivanya, Miss Diane Weeks, Kyle Dunbar, Janine Parker. Of course, our Kyle is here. Hey, <laughs> Kyle. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I am so glad you're all here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by taking, so this is what we call foil paper. Foil paper is just paper that we, and we've gotten to where we use this a lot more than we used to. Foil paper we just line things with. We have gotten to where now, because plants, we're having a hard time getting plant baskets, we use this foil paper to also wrap um, plants with. And so what I'm doing is I'm basically just making a liner for this dough bowl. This is a wooden dough bowl. We actually got these in, I ordered them in. They're not terribly expensive, $35. So they're really, a, that's a great little gift. Um, you can fill it with just about anything. But of course, being a flower shop, I'm gonna fill it really quickly with some fresh flowers. Now I'm working with the Oasis and I am just going to take this Oasis and I am going to fill this reservoir with a few little pieces of oasis. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask those questions as I'm going. Victoria is gonna um, ask your questions so I can answer them if you have any questions about this container or how we're, I'm putting this together or any kind of questions. You can certainly ask those as we go. And so what I'm doing here is I just laid that oasis right down in to this little dough bowl and I am taking and kind of folding it so it's just kind of a little, um, it just holds the water, okay? I'm gonna take a little piece of tape, I'm gonna wipe my hands off on my pants, and I am going to take just a little piece of tape and I'm just taping this oasis right down into this dough bowl. You are all safe this afternoon. Has is there anybody having some terrible weather? Oh, let's see. It's actually been fine up until now. All of a sudden, it's starting to um, darken up a little bit outside, and the wind's picking up just a little bit. And so it's getting a little, a little menacing outside. Okay, so what I did was you can see my foil all the way around. And then I just taped that oasis right down into that bowl. And next what I'm going to do is this is that um, Spanish moss. I'm just going to take this Spanish moss and I'm just coming around that oasis so that you can't see it. I just don't, you know, I always like to cover those mechanics. And so that's what I'm doing. Now, um, so I'm just laying this moss right over around that foil so that you can't see it. You can see my oasis on the top, but you can't see all of my mechanics, okay? All right. Uh, Pamela Willoughby asks, how do you keep the water from not going out of the paper? So you're not gonna, you're not gonna put lots and lots of water in this. You're gonna stick your finger just right down in there and just make sure you just feel that um, little hello how are you you're gonna just add just a little bit of water um, right down in there it's not something that's gonna last for a long period of time 
you can get one. Okay. Um, give me just one second. I'll be right back Wait for you. I see a lot of where y'all are coming from. Thanks for being here. See. I hope the weather's doing okay where you, where you guys are. Can I? starting to get scary here. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add just a little bit of leather leaf. And of course, I don't want a lot of leather leaf to show. I just want that leather leaf to kind of cover my oasis and just give me a little bit of a base. Now, when you use a container like this, it is not gonna hold a whole lot of water. So, you don't wanna use hydrangeas in it. You don't wanna use anything that, um, that's going to take lots and lots of water. Okay, so all I did was, this was less than two stems of leather leaf. And I just laid it just right on top. So it's not anything fancy. It's just gonna give me my little bit of a base. And then next I'm gonna come in with my flowers. Now I do wanna show you this quick technique because you know I like hydrangeas. I'm gonna take a paper plate and this is just a clean paper plate. I'm gonna spray a little bit of this just for flower spray paint onto this plate and just kind of make a puddle, okay, just like that. I have green hydrangeas that I'm going to make them look like blue hot, I mean green, green carnations, that I am going to make them look like blue hydrangeas tucked into this arrangement. So I'm just taking this carnation, I'm gonna cut it off short, and I'm gonna just dip it right into that blue and give me a little bit of a blue tint to that green carnation. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it look a little bit like a blue hydrangea or a, a blue green hydrangea. So I just took it and just rolled those and I tipped that carnation. It's kind of hard to see that blue. but And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little carnations and I'm going to tuck them together down deep into this arrangement. Now, I'm using a carnation because a carnation is not going to wilt if it doesn't have lots and lots of water. Okay, so I'm just taking that paint, I'm adding a little more to my plate, and I'm just dipping that carnation right into that paint. Now, you can spray paint them, but to me, when you just tip them, it makes it look a little bit more like an antique hydrangea. Now, I'm tucking them deep. They're not going to be just big focal flowers stuck in this arrangement. Now what I'm doing here is that that little carnation wasn't open. I'm just brushing it open, cutting it short, adding a little paint to my plate, and I'm just rolling it right in there. Has anybody ever seen that before? Have you ever seen anybody tip a rose or tip a carnation with paint before? Um, we actually did this the other day and used a little bit of a coral to um, tip these carnations. And it was so pretty, and I've done it with roses. Sometimes you'll see um, roses that, that are two-toned where they have like a deep color. I think there's what, carnival, that's a yellow with a red tip that's really pretty. Well, you can do the same thing with a rose by taking just a little bit of paint and it's floral paint. It's made specifically for flowers, and you just dip those petals just right into that paint. Um, Miss Pamela and Miss Melissa says, no, they haven't seen it before. Um, I think Miss Molly says, yes, it's very neat. Isn't and that neat? <laughs> Miss Angie asks, um, what kind of paint are you using? Okay, this is called Just for Flowers paint. It's made specifically for flowers. Now, I will say, 
Um, it's hard to come by right now just because I think what the main thing is is it's not so much the paint that we're having a hard problem making, it's the cans and the little nozzles. It's the little plastic nozzles that you spray with. And I want to say so badly, we don't need a nozzle. We've got nozzles. Just send us the paint. We can so pull it off of another off of another um, can. But um, yeah, it's called Just for Flowers. It's Design Master. And it's not real, real easy to come by. But um, but it really gives me that corn, I mean that hydrangea effect. Okay, and you can put three together, you can do two, you can do it however you want to. I'm going to have enough other flowers tucked in here that it's not going to be a big deal. Next, I'm going to come in. These are little yellow mums. I love them because they remind me a lot of a dahlia. So, in this arrangement, basically, I am just going to fill up the arrangement with just mixed flowers. Moms are so hardy and they, they last a long time. And so that's what I love about a mom. Victoria, has anybody told about the weather where they're from? Yes. Um, let's see. We had, Miss Melissa said there were a couple of tornadoes across Oklahoma yesterday. Uh, Miss Brandy Parker said, we had our storms yesterday from what I'm seeing on Facebook down around my relatives around Austin, Texas area. They had tornadoes yesterday. Oh gosh. I hope mm -hmm. everybody was safe. Oh, Miss Charlotte Coral sent 200 stars. Oh, Miss Charlotte, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. So what I'm doing here is these are just some pretty roses. I'm going to take it and I'm going to flare it open just a little bit. And all I'm doing there is I'm just sticking my finger right down into those petals and I'm just pulling it a little loose. And then I'm blowing it just to open it. And I'm going to tuck that right down deep. This coral almost matches my sweater, doesn't it, Victoria? Yeah. It's pretty. Um, Miss Yvette asks, are those chrysanthemums? These are chrysanthemums, but I love the fact that they look so much like little dahlias. Um, they just make me happy. Mm -hmm. But yes, ma'am, they are chrysanthemums. So these roses, I'm just tucking a few roses down deep. And I'm just cutting their heads off. So everything's really short in this arrangement. When you go to um, work with a dough bowl, um, I'm just cutting everything short. And just tucking it right in. I've got some berries. These are Hypericum berries. I'm not going to strip all of the foliage off because I like the foliage. So I am just going to leave a little bit of the foliage on the Hypericum berries. And I love this lime green color because it looks like spring to me. These are orange spray roses. I thought I would cut those and tuck. Oh, I lost a hand. Tuck those in deep. So it's really a mounded arrangement. All you're gonna do is cut things off short and just mound, okay? So it doesn't have a whole lot of, now you can certainly um, place your flowers, you know, in different pla in, in places and make it, you know, very artistic if you want to. For me, all I'm doing is just a little mounded dough bowl where it's just a mound of flowers pretty much. So it's a low compact arrangement. So tell me, if you made one of these dough bowls, where would you use it in your home? Would you use it like on a dining table? I think that's where I would use it. Or on your buffet, you could put it on your buffet table. Or this would even be very nice like on a coffee table. Trisha Keys asks, what are the berries? The berries are Hypericum berries. And Hypericum berries um, come in lots of different colors. They come in reds, peaches, green, kind of a creamy, whitish, yellowy tone. Um, but they're year round. We can get them year round. And they're long lasting. So I really enjoy using them. And they give us a little bit of a different texture. So this is Solidago. And what I'm doing with this Solidago is I'm taking it and I am popping it in two separate pieces so that I can use, I can double my, my usage. So I just popped it and tucked it right in. 
And so I've got more placements. And you can see how these have, this piece has um, a little bit longer um, pieces. So you can actually use those as individual, individual placements. So you can see how I just took it and I am just taking the individual little pieces of Solidego and tucking them here and there throughout the arrangement. Now when you make an arrangement like this and it's low and compact, you can use shorter pieces, which is always nice. Miss Pamela says I have one and I use it on my table. You use it on your table, like your dining table? Um, Miss Melissa asks, in a shallow bowl like that, does a low, shorter stem arrangement stay fresh longer than a longer stem? Yes, ma'am. And it's strictly because it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to have so much water in the bowl at a time. Now, with this arrangement, you want to water it every day because it's going to constantly be drinking. So you want to continuously water it um, every single day so that it has plenty of water. But yes, the shorter the stems, the faster it drinks, the happier the um, flowers are and it's just strictly because it doesn't have lots and lots and lots of water to drink from and so it doesn't have to um, work so hard to drink the water these are called rose lilies and I'm just taking the individual buds and cutting them off it's just a double lily so it's got lots of lots more petals and this color is fantastic so I just cut the little bud off and I'm just going to tuck that little bud right into this arrangement so I'm just cutting them off the individual stems and just tucking them right in. And then I'm actually going to use the buds too. You see how these haven't opened? I'm just gonna take those, cut those right off, just like that. And I'm just gonna tuck some of these little buds right down into this arrangement. So the thing I really like about a low compact arrangement like this is I am able to use even the pieces that are really short. Um, and that's really nice. It's really nice to be able to use some of the shorter things that you have in the cooler too. Um, I'm also going to take a little bit of seeded eucalyptus and I'm gonna finish the sides with this eucalyptus. And all this is gonna do is just kinda dress it up just a little bit. You know, I like eucalyptus. And so you can take little short pieces of eucalyptus and just kind of tuck that in here and there. Trish Anderson said she would put it on the bar between my kitchen and dining room. Oh, it would be perfect. Now you can leave a little height in this arrangement. You can absolutely leave some height. Um, it's just going to probably last longer if it's shorter. But yes, you can absolutely leave, you know, and make it interesting. You could tuck Easter eggs for Easter in this arrangement. You can tuck, um, you can make an arrangement like this and do pine cones. Um, I actually have a dough bowl, well, no, it's a trough container at my house um, that I used and it's basically just like this in, the, in a long low container just like this. And I used pine cones as my base and then I put in little carrots and a little sign that said um, carrot patch and um, but you can always do lots of fun low containers with just adding stuff to it it doesn't even have to be flowers necessarily Edie Smith asks how do you water it so I'm gonna set it I'm gonna set it in my sink and I'm just gonna add water um, water just right down into the reservoir. You can use like, I would probably, you know the watering can that I used yesterday, that silver watering can. Oh, you oh know. it's in there. It's I in know. there. Anyway, I would use just a tiny little watering can or, or even a um, measuring cup that has like a little spout and pour just a little bit of water. You can actually get your finger right down into um, the liner and just make sure it doesn't overflow. Um, then, so the last thing, the prettiest part of this arrangement, I think, are these anemones. So, we have a precious um, little lady who, uh, who does at-home gardening, and she brings us some of her fresh blooms from her garden. Her name is Skylar, and um, she grows some of the prettiest things. Well, these are anemones, and they're all very short-stemmed, and so I am going to actually take them and you see when I say short stem, they're very short. But this, these little anemones are absolutely perfect for this arrangement. 
so I'm gonna take, I love this purple. Isn't that amazing? It's almost a blue purple. I'm gonna leave these a little longer to give us a little interest in this arrangement. So I'm gonna tuck these anemones in. Look at that dark center. I mean, they are just from heaven. They are from heaven. And I'm gonna tuck these little anemones. Now the problem with anemone, the stems being this short is it's hard to use them in any other arrangement, right? You have to use them in more of a compact container like this. And so that's why I really enjoy making more compact arrangements like this just because they're fantastic. And so I just am cutting those stems and just tucking those anemones right down into that arrangement. And so you can kind of see how pretty those anemones are tucked in. And then lastly, to give just a tiny bit more interest, I love that fuchsia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so pretty. Gosh, they're so pretty. Okay, just to give it just a little bit more interest, the last thing I'm gonna do, and another one of my favorite little blooms, and I use these in um, Ivy's Wedding this past week. These are called Billy Balls. And Billy Balls are just little orbs, just little yellow orbs. I guess that's what you would say, right, Victoria? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tuck these little Billy Balls right down in here. Okay, so my last question to you to see what you would like for me to do, would you like for me to add ribbon? I can add ribbon if you would like, or I don't have to add ribbon. For my last one that I did, I did add some plaid, some baby blue plaid that was, um, because it was for a baby boy. So I added just a touch of gingham. It was really a gingham, like a checked, baby blue checked gingham. So, if you would like for me to add a little ribbon, I am happy to do that. And let me show you the ribbons that I brought. So, just in case I have, this is more of a burlap. I have this that looks like the Easter Bunny, which is just a plaid. It's just kind of an Eastery plaid. Or, I have yellow gingham. What do you think? Anybody think ribbon or no ribbon? I've gotten all no ribbons. No so ribbons. Okay, I don't have to add ribbon. Okay, so here is our final thing. Tell me, do you have any questions about this arrangement? Any more questions that you want me to um, tell you about this arrangement? See, we did get some questions earlier. Miss um, Melissa asks, oh, it oh, is it is so, so pretty. pretty. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? What a nice gift because they get this nice container afterwards. That's the best part. <laughs> is that you get such a beautiful arrangement, but then you get a great container afterwards. Miss Alicia asked. Miss Melissa asks, have you Alicia, ever arranged in a sugar mold? I don't believe I have. I don't believe I've ever arranged in a sugar mold. I may have to look at that. Um, mm -hmm. And when you say a sugar mold, is a sugar mold, I don't know if this is a sugar mold. I have like a little container that's a wooden container that has the little round circles and I've actually just put artificial succulents down in it and I'm not sure if they call that a sugar mold or not. Um, honey, I can arrange in anything if it holds water um, and that's fun. I love mm -hmm. the fact that you can use absolutely any kind of vessel to make an absolutely beautiful arrangement as long as it holds water or that you can line it and make it hold water. Um, Miss Melissa Waits says, or she asked, what, what was the green plant that was used in the wedding flowers from this past weekend? Was it kind of, um, was it kind of feathery looking? We used the green plant. I'm trying to think, Victoria. Um, I know that we used green dragon, which was kind of an airy looking, beautiful foliage. Guys, thank you so much for the hearts and the thumbs up. We appreciate y'all all so much for being here. Um, I used the green dragon, which was fabulous, and we don't have any left, or I would have put some of that in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did that. That's the only green I can think of besides the chamomile or the, um, Fever few, but it was, I mean, it had lots of green on it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't think. 
But if you have a picture of it, snap a picture and circle it and send it to me. I'll be happy to answer that question for oh, you. Oh, Miss Melissa said Green Dragon was it. Was it? Good. Yes, Green Dragon is so wonderful. Now, I will say the only problem about Green Dragon is it's very water loving and it will wilt. It's a lot like, it'll remind you a lot of Dusty Miller. Dusty Miller wilts if it doesn't have enough water source and Green Dragon's the same. It has to be in a water source. So you don't want it in like a bridal bouquet um, where she's gonna hold it too much out of water. It's just gonna kinda get wilty. Any more questions? Oh, I have one more question. And okay. also, Miss Jolene sent 50 stars. Wow, Miss Jolene, thank you so much. Guys, thank you for the stars. You are all so wonderful. We appreciate that so much. Mm -hmm. And Miss Sharon asks, is there flower food added when you soak the oasis? Yes, yes, we just add it. So I have a big, um, gosh, it's one of those t kind of tubs that you can wash dishes in. It's just a big red tub. We fill it with water and we add water, flower food to it. And so our oasis absorbs the flower food, yes. Oh, and then um, one more. Miss Sarah asks, what is the purple flower? This purple flower in this arrangement, anemones anemones and these were actually grown at a local farm um, here in I don't know if they're in Octavia Hall County but very local to us but um, yes they're anemones guys thank you thank you thank you for being willing to come here early this afternoon we are actually fixing to put this in the cooler clean up a little bit and we are going to go home and get in our safe place guys thank you thank you for being here and we will see you all real soon and y'all be safe be safe thank you uh -huh.